What I'd like to do now is start to talk about the implementation of the strategy pattern in C++, and then we'll continue on by looking at more of the details in the actual code. So we're going to focus here on the begin and end factory methods that are provided in the expression tree class, which will return the requested iterator strategy. So here's expression tree, and you can see that there's begin and end factory methods. And these begin and end factory methods actually don't really do any work, but instead they forward to an internal factory that makes the appropriate iterator, iterator strategy. And we'll take a closer look at this. It's actually really, really, really cool. It's also worth noting that this particular application of factory method is accessed via the abstraction class from the, the abstraction role from the bridge pattern and is implemented via a command from the command pattern to create a strategy used as an iterator to access each node in a composite expression tree. So you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six patterns all embodied in like these three or four lines of code that represent high pattern density from both the design point of view and also from an implementation point of view. And this is incredibly useful. Once you understand these patterns, once you understand how they work together, this code makes a lot of sense. Before you understand these patterns, before you understand how they work together, you're probably like, yeah, it's some code, that's, that's nice. But once you see what the patterns are doing, you'll marvel at how clean things are. Uh, in a similar way, of course, the implementation of array list and uh, vector two and other classes from your assignments three, four, and five also represent high pattern density if you do them correctly. So you can do things like implement your constructors and your remove operation and so on by using factory methods and using iterator and using strategy and all this kind of stuff. And once again, when you go back and look at your early solutions that probably didn't use all these elements in that particular way, your code may have still worked, but it didn't exhibit high pattern density. And once you understand the patterns, you can see how much cleaner and simpler it is and much, much more concise than doing things with loops. The whole concept of an off by one error just disappears altogether when you start using the more powerful pattern-oriented constructs in STL and later versions of C++ like range-based for loops, which is really cool. So I'm going to focus here primarily on the make iterator factory method that's used to dynamically allocate the appropriate iterator strategy. And this is very similar to our discussion where we did on factory methods before, where we were using this clever technique of having a map that maps names to basically command objects that will return implementations, which in this case are, are iterator strategies. And so we're going to see how all this stuff works. And it's, it's really, really cool. So here's the ET iterator factory class itself. And it's the thing that's used to allocate the given iterator strategy. As we did with factory method, we're going to apply the command pattern with a slight variant to initialize the ET iterator factory. And that works by having a type def to a pointer to member function that takes an expression tree reference and an end iterator and returning a corresponding instance of ET iter impl, which is the root of the implementer hierarchy for the iterator implementation we talked about in our previous discussion of the iterator pattern. Armed with this traversal pointer to member function type def, we then go ahead and make ourselves a map that maps strings to traversal pointers to member functions. And I call that traversal map. And then we make an instance of traversal map. And then the constructor for ET iterator factory is going to initialize the elements in our traversal map, giving it keys like in order, pre order, post order, and level order with the corresponding pointers to member functions. And so those are going to be used basically like commands in order to create the corresponding strategies, the corresponding iterator strategies when they're invoked. So I think you, you probably see where this is headed if you paid attention to the factory method discussion. So here's the make iterator 
class, this will make an iterator. And you can see in this particular case that it's, it's got a series of parameters passed to it, including the expression tree that we're making an iterator for as a reference, the string that we're going to use to indicate the traversal order, which would be in order, post order, pre order, and so on. And then whether we want to make something in an end iterator. I'm not going to talk a lot about that right now, but um, if, we'll look at that when we look at the code in more detail. So this method, of course, is going to find and execute the command that makes an iterator strategy. And you can see here how we look up in the map using the find operation, which of course it's a map, so it's sorted, so find will always be bounded by log base two of n. So we'll try to find the pre-allocated command that will make us a corresponding iterator strategy. If we find it, we then go ahead and say star iter arrow second. And that iter arrow second is a pointer to member function. So we're dereferencing a pointer to member function. And then we're going to go ahead and pass it in the tree in the end iterator Boolean flag. And that will make us the appropriate iterator strategy. And we'll look at that code in more detail in, in a minute. If we don't actually find what we're looking for, we go ahead and throw the invalid iterator exception and say, hey, I don't know what you're doing, but this isn't going to work. So we throw an exception if we give it an unsupported iterator request. So we're now going to go ahead and take a look at the iterator factory. And for various reasons, I've tucked the iterator factory inside of the expression tree class itself. It, it probably doesn't need to go here. It probably could be moved into a different file and, and stand on its own. But at the moment, that's where it, that's where it resides. And you can see here that this factory method, this class defines the make iterator factory method that's past the parameters we talked about before. Now, what I didn't show you when we were just looking at the slide version of this is all of these other member functions that make the appropriate type of iterator subclass. So make in order tree iterator, make pre order tree iterator, make post order tree iterator, and so on and so forth. And these are all member functions. And as you can see down here, we're going to type def something to be called a traversal PTMF or pointer to member function. And that's going to have a signature that corresponds to all of these little helper methods here. And of course, there is going to be, they are going to be what gets registered with our traversal map. So here's our traversal map. As you can see here, the traversal map is instantiated with the various helper methods under the string name that corresponds to what they're doing. So we have in order, which is going to be associated with make in order tree iterator, pre order, which is associated with make pre order tree iterator, post order, which is associated with make post order tree iterator, and so on and so forth. So that's what's going to be stored in here. And then if you look down at these various factory methods, they're basically performing the operations of a command object where you're going to, when they're called, they will create the corresponding type of iterator. So level order, make level order tree iterator, of course, will make a new level order et iter impl passing in the parameters. Same thing for make in order tree iterator, make pre order tree iterator, make post order tree iterator, and so on. And then as we saw before, once those things are put into the map, then the make iterator method is simply going to go ahead and look up in the map, try to find the point in a member function corresponding to the traversal order. And if it finds it, it'll go ahead and invoke it, which will then make the appropriate object. And uh, in this particular case, I just define a, an instance, a tree iterator factory instance here. There's other things I could have done. I could have made it a singleton, uh, but this is just a way to show the way this works. Then if we come down here and we take a look at the begin and end methods, you can see how they're going to essentially forward to the make iterator factory, or sorry, the make iterator method in the tree iterator factory. So again, we're combining a bunch of different patterns. We're, we're using the factory method pattern in order to create us iterator strategies. And of course, that's the strategy pattern that we're using. And then we're creating iterators. So that's the iterator pattern. And it goes on and on and on. So it's another great example of, of high pattern density. But I particularly want to call your attention to the fact that in this case, we're using the same trick we did before when we talked about factory method of making a map of 
in this case, pointer to member functions, and then using those things essentially to create the appropriate elements as essentially factory methods.